Shalom everyone and welcome to another episode of Pod for Israel. My name is Dr. Erez Soref and I have here with me in the studio Dr. Golan Borshi. Hi shalom, Golan. Shalom. And um, you know in the recent weeks the social networks and the internet were flooded, absolutely flooded, particularly before Christmas with videos and texts that are stating that Yeshua, Jesus, was not at all Jewish but he was a proud Palestinian and moreover than that uh, the um, state of Israel is doing an absolute absolute genocide to the Palestinian people. So we wanted to talk about that a little bit. Uh, what do you think, Golan? You know, I almost thought that I was dreaming when I saw the picture of Yeshua coming today with the, I don't know how you call it, kafia, the kafiyah, yeah, the, the, yeah. the kafiyah, and, and a rifle. As if he, if he was here today, he would fight against his Jewish people. With so the Yeshua side... is a, a, a Palestinian liberation theologian that's fighting the, the the state of Israel. He's a freedom fighter who would fight with the Hamas against Israel, according to the to, to to some of the pictures. This is amazing. It is, you know, and and we we've seen some um, uh, what seems to be uh, you know uh, religious leaders from the established churches. Uh, people that claim to be Palestinians that are trying to use different manipulations, emotional manipulations to blame Israel in in murdering uh, innocent people in the Gaza Strip. Uh, really, they're, they're using the word genocide over and over and over again. Uh, did you see those videos? What, what kind of stood out to you? Yeah, and so I have several things to that, but apparently we are ident identified as the white man, right? The yeah. white man that is colonial. That's right. Right? And yeah, I don't he, think... he was saying, oh, no one's going to listen to us because because of the color of our skin. Yeah, so I wonder if he ever if he, if he ever <laughs> been to Israel and saw, and, and saw the color of our skin because I don't remember being so white. Well, I think we, you and I are actually much darker than some of those speakers. And, so. and it's it's good to, to mention that I think Jewish people come in every size and color and shape, right? That's right. So so That's to claim right. any any racism in, in that in that sense is crazy. Absolutely crazy. But but the claim for genocide. Yeah, that's, let's talk about that for a little bit. That is so sad. So, so give give our, our listeners a bit of a context. I mean, so, uh, so we where remember does it come the, from? the the brutal attack by Hamas that took place on the seventh of October, this deadly day that we compare to the to the Holocaust, yeah. and and what's amazing that if we if we speak about genocide, they were butchering Jews for only one reason uh, in their own for, homes, yeah, in their homes for being Jewish, and we're talking about sorry if there's kids listening, but we're talking about babies women, yeah. Holocaust survivors, just for one reason, for being Jewish. And, and the irony is that the, most of the people surrounding the Gaza Strip are liberal Jews, right. liberal Jews that would support That's right. the, 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 the causes of the Arabs in Gaza. And they were the first to be butchered. Right. So if we talk about genocide, I think we need to see who did the genocide and yeah. who wants to do the genocide because one of their spokesmen, the spokesman yeah, they, of Hamas, they look, said, when they talk about genocide, they look at the intent. And I think the intention, the, one of the spokesmen of Hamas said, we want, we want to triple, we want to yeah. triple the 7th of October. If we could, we want to double it and triple it. So if talking about genocide, I think the accusation should go to the other side. Yeah, and I, and I think as, as, as nations around, or people around the world are looking at what's going on, you know, you have to remember there's 1,400 people that were brutally, inhumanely murdered. I mean, I'm not going to mention the atrocities that were done before the, some of them were murdered. And kidnapped. Kidnapping more than 300 innocent Israelis as hostages held in inhumane conditions. Civilians. Civilians, and they're not allowed access to the Red Cross. There were only more than 5,000 missiles shot on Israel. So I'm asking people, who, wh what state would tolerate that kind of a thing towards its and, citizens? And by the way, most of the missiles, if not all of them, are targeted yeah, on civilians, civilians. That's right. On civilians, not army bases. So why would they want to shoot civilians if not to kill innocent Jewish people? Yeah. And now we need to ask, what about the IDF? And every day, sadly, every day, we hear about soldiers that are being killed. I IDF soldiers, that, why are they being killed if Israel just wants to do genocide? Just wipe them out. So, so <laughs> let's talk about that specifically. Does Israel truly murder innocent people intentionally in the Gaza Strip? Now, now both you and I have been to the IDF, you yeah. know, our children, uh, many of our employees. And, and students. So is that the spirit of the idea? Is that really what's going on? So of course it's not. And if 
if Israel wanted to do, to commit genocide, God forbid, everybody knows the, the power that the IDF has. It could have taken a few minutes to do to genocide. To accomplish that. Yeah, yeah, to accomplish genocide. So obviously Israel is not trying to do that. And by the way, remember, the fact that the soldiers are dying is because they're going house from house right. to just to catch terrorists. And going and, out out of their way to, to not to hurt uh, civilians, putting themselves in a line of uh, fire. Exactly. And even in the Israeli society, there's a debate of why do you send the soldiers house by house in Gaza? Why not to just try to bomb from air? Yeah. There's a debate in the Israeli society. Right. So, of course, if this is, again, this is crazy. Now, crazy. now, the definition of genocide, and I think it's worth mentioning, is an intentional destruction of a group of people due to their national, ethnic, racial, or religious membership and identity. Okay, so, so the real question is, is that what Israel is doing? And are we killing the innocent intentionally? And indiscriminately. We, the only target, and th these are the targets of the war by the prime minister, by the minister of the, the targets are to, to, to wipe out the Hamas uh, terrorist organization, to wipe out the Hamas and free the hostages. These, the, this is the, the objectives of the war, right. to wipe out the Hamas terrorist organization and to yeah. free the hostages. So, Nothing else but that. But and that. I think the state of Israel emphasizes over and over again, this is not a war against the Palestinian people, but against the evil regime of of Hamas. And praise the Lord, there's brave Arab citizens in Gaza that are screaming for help for Israel. Help us free right. Gaza from yeah. Hamas. Palestinians that are, exactly. are coming on camera. Yeah. It, on camera, endangering their lives. And by the way, I think we all saw that when Israel called the, the, the Arabs in, Ga in, in northern Gaza to, 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 to move south, Israel had to protect them from Hamas. Yeah. Hamas them, wouldn't yeah. let them right. uh, leave their houses because they need them as the body, as the human shield. Right, right, so, right. So again, all this nonsense of genocide, as if, again, if Israel if Israel wanted to commit that, come on, are you, are you serious? You know, I, of course, I, I agree, and I think that this is absolutely false. Now, however, and I think that's something that is a big internal debate in Israel, and I think internationally as well, there's no question there's a lot of suffering in Gaza. So kids are not going to school, people can't go to their work. I think 1.8 million people evacuated from their homes and are leaving as, as internal, internally displaced people, you know, uh, refugees in the south of the Gaza Strip. So there's a lot of suffering. And the question is, who's to blame? And I think that's the key. So is it all Israel's fault? Is Israel doing it out of spite? I mean, out of desire to cause suffering? So, Why is it happening? So I think the answer comes from the Arabs in Gaza that are now, many of them trying to, are, are realizing that it's Hamas's fault, that they're taking hostage by Hamas. So think of the irony. There's Jewish hostages in Gaza and there's Arab hostages. The, yeah. the Gaza, the, the population the is, people. Yeah. the Gazan people are taking hostage by Hamas. So we want to liberate Gaza. We want to liberate Gaza from this terror organization. And by the way, we talked about 1,400 1, murdered in Israel by Hamas. We have to remember, it's not only Jewish people. That's it's right. also Bedouins, some Arab Jewish people. Arabs, and Druze. Now, the Druze are fighting in Gaza for Israel. But Bedouins, which are Muslims, were also butchered. And not to talk about foreign workers in That's Israel right. that were also. So, so again, well, Hamas... people from Thailand. I mean, they, they, they were workers. I mean, they're not Jews. They're not Israelis. They're not anything. Just it just butchered. shows you the brutality. They, they don't care. They just want to kill. Just want to destroy. So definitely, I think, uh, from an objective perspective, the discussion about genocide is completely skewed, is absolutely and is absolute lie. Also on online and social networks and so on, there are messages... Um, from um, people that claim to be, you know, religious uh, leaders that say that Israel is a colonialist power in the region. What, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, so the, this, this guy, he even says the world can be divided into two groups, oppressors and oppressed. And obviously we know, he says, all of us know that Israel is the oppressed, the, the right, oppressors. Right. The, yeah. the, the history of the last 2,000 years show that the Jews are the oppressors, right? Now, if you see, if try to find Israel on the map. If, if we're colonialists, we're doing a, a really, <laughs> we lousy, job, right? really lousy job because even, even what we have, is, 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 uh, yeah. they, they want to divide it. But we have to ask ourselves, is radical Islam colon colonialists? Do, do, so do, let's talk a little bit about Islamic theology. Yes, Hamas, the, the Muslim Brotherhood, and ISIS. 
didn't they talk about oh, yeah. the Muslim state? Oh, absolutely. And the Muslim Wh- which state... Is, which is global. I exactly. Mean, that's a, yeah. And it doesn't go only in the Middle East. Of I course. think they're, they, they, they aspire to conquer back, they say conquer back Europe, and even the U.S. The States, as what they say, question. a quiet jihad. So there's the militant jihad with ISIS, and there's the quiet jihad with immigrants, that immig- Muslim immigrants in Europe and America. So... To claim that the Jews are colonialist, that's ironic that it comes from, from, from the Muslim, from a Muslim party. You know right. what I mean? Because their theology, and I think that's a lot of people don't understand that, theologically speaking, Islam is viewed in, in the eyes of Muslim and, you know, in the Quran that as a religion that should be global. Exactly. And anyone not accepting it needs to be eradicated. So I think if they, if they, if, if they want to, if they want to target Israel as being colonialist, I think they should look in the mirror first. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, I think the state of Israel and many Israelis want to help the uh, rebuild of the Gaza Strip when, when time comes, you know, after we remove of course. Um, uh, Hamas. But I want to go back, Golan, if that's okay, I want to go back just a little bit to to all those um, videos that are talking about Jesus the Palestinian. And, um, you know, there was one particular video in uh, in a satire show that uh, showed how Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus are in Bethlehem, you know, and and then a group of wise men from the West (laughs) came from Berkeley University and told them that they're not Jews because there are no Jews, but they're Palestinians. Jews will only come to this land 1,948 years from now. As a colonialist power. Oh, I see someone's been listening this semester. (laughs) True. (laughs) What do you mean, we are Jews? No, no, you're not. <laughs> so what are we? You are Palestinians, of course. Yeah, and in the end of the clip, they're saying, so, so wait, wait, so who killed, who killed Jesus? <laughs> who killed Yeshua? N- not the Jews, right? Because there are no Jews. And, 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 and the professor is saying, no, no, you, you have to study more. You have to, come, you have to come take another semester. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. And then stop, stop. Wait a minute. Our baby will be the king of the Palestinians? Exactly. Too bad he'll be dead at a very young age because he'll be murdered by the Jews. Oh, my God. Um, Excuse me, Professor. Uh, So there are Jews living here? No, 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 no. Only Palestinians. Oh, so the Palestinians will kill Jesus? No, no, no Palestinian would ever hurt anyone. Never, especially not Hamas. Wait, I don't understand. Okay, guys, this is exactly what our next class is about, all right? Oh. How did the Jews kill Jesus without even existing? It's, it, it's going to be fun, all right? Don't worry about wow. it. <laughs> it's so worth 54 grand a year in uh, tuition. Right? Kidding. So there are no Jews because they're all Palestinians, but, but the Jews still murdered Jesus. Of course, Jesus. because, because we, we, we need anti-Semity, right? We, we, we need the Jews so, so, so they can be an objective for anti-Semity. And I think, um, you know, as we see those phenomena, these phenomena in social networks, I think that's a place where true followers of Jesus need to stand up. And it needs to be very, very clear. Jesus is Jewish. His first disciples are Jewish. And um, he died on the cross for the sins of the entire world, including the Palestinian people Amen. that deserve to live in dignity. There's Amen. no question about that. But I think um, claiming that Jesus is Palestinian and is a liberation theologian fighting for the Palestinians is, is an absolute twist but, of, of but, the scriptures. But, but look look at our God, how wonderful God is, because it was all over the social media and in Israel. Jewish That's people right. saw that. And, and God, what, what Satan meant for bad, God meant for good. And now what we see in Israel is that many, many Israelis are claiming the yeah. Jewishness of Yeshua and they're saying, Israelis, I mean, we're not talking about followers of, right, of Yeshua. Right, we're right. talking about... So unbelieving Jewish Israelis are saying in social networks, no, 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 he is Jewish. Jesus is Jewish. This is what we in One for Israel are saying for, for years. We're trying years. to tell you that all those years. And now they're saying they're reclaiming Yeshua as a Jewish, as a, as a Jewish man. So give us some examples for that. So, and, and this is amazing. A, a figure which is really a known figure. Um, I don't know if I can mention his name. A well-known journalist. Religious, non, not, not a follower of Yeshua, as, as far as we know. Orthodox Jew, yeah. Religious uh-huh. from the right wing. He, he writes in the newspaper. He's, he's an anchor in a, in, in a well-known channel. And he wrote as a reaction to the Palestinian Jesus. He wrote, historically, Yeshua was born and he lived as a Jew. No, he's reclaiming Yeshua. Yeah, that's right. That's His right. whole mission 
wasn't to abolish the Torah, but to fulfill it. Yeah? He doesn't have anything with anti-Semitic and pogrom. That's right. Yeah? That's right. And he says he, he observed the Torah. He was a good Jew. A religious... Yeah, no, a that's, religious that's amazing. Music. That's amazing. And I, I, think, I think these are some of the... Um, you know, war is terrible on all accounts, but even through those bad circumstances, good good things can happen. And I think there's more awareness of uh, the uh, believer, the fact that believers in Jesus are Israel's only friends. When there's so much uh, standing against, so many people standing against Israel. And uh, there was another interesting uh, it's example. It's amazing that Jewish, the Jewish people are rediscovering Yeshua. I think, you know, we, we got it um, as a WhatsApp message. Non-Messianic. Female soldiers. Are singing a Messianic song, a really known Messianic song all together screaming from the top of their lungs. And I think the soldier that wrote the song is actually right. her brother. He serves with us, yeah. Yeah, he serves with us. This is, I think, the first time I see yeah. so, female soldiers that are singing a messianic song literally before they go to battle. Yeah. That's amazing. Amazing. So uh, maybe last thing to mention for this podcast is that I think Israelis and Jews worldwide were absolutely shocked to see the amazing unparalleled wave of anti-Semitism, mm. hatred towards not only the state of Israel, but the Jews. And, um, you know, when we see it in, in the larger society, of course, it's very, very painful. But what do we see in, in the church? That's, and, that's, uh, and I think the sad part is, and, and we want to ask the question, is there a connection between anti-Semitism and replacement theology? Because sometimes they go together, right? So we want to talk about that in our next podcast. Mm. But thank you for being with us. Thank you for praying for us. Um, we encourage you to stand for the truth, for wh wherever you are, the truth of the Bible, the truth of Scripture. And we wish you blessings and strength. God bless you. Shalom. Amen.